Hey, what's going on guys? Comic again Z here. In this video I'd like to introduce a new hopefully promising project I've just started and want to share with you guys. And last night, well it was uh, kind of uh, a few hours past midnight, I've been composing this sort of a description uh, trying to bring all the ideas I had in mind into a one single description trying to deliver the very gist essence of what am I trying to do. So instead of trying to say this in my own words, I would rather read through this once and forever just to give you an idea what the entire project is all about. So without further ado, let's actually start. So this is the didactic proof of concept implementation of a bare minimum chess engine and GUI I've developed to help people learn the very gist of chess programming. This work is dedicated to hobby programmers who eventually want to come up with their own playing, uh, with their own programs, playing either standard chess or chess variants. Every chess variant presented here is available as a single standalone heavily committed JavaScript source file that can run locally in the browser and computer, or on computer or mobile device. Some nitty gritty rules are dropped for simplicity and clarity. All the features and limitations regarding a particular chess variant are listed below. The entire engine is the single function that takes board position as an input and outputs best move found within the fixed search depth. And then here goes a description for, uh, of the features and limitations for every single variant. So currently I only have two variants, uh, standard chess with some drops of the rules like uh, no, no three fold repetitions, no... 50 rule move count, no castling, no impassing, just for simplicity, for clarity, for uh, with the didactic uh, ideas in mind. And CNC actually has uh, actually all the all it, it plays like a normal CNC, but it doesn't have three four repetitions and 60 rule move count in this case. But this doesn't really violate the game that much because again, like the idea is not to make a tournament play or things like that, but just to be able to play uh, versus computer and the moves are highlighted that the idea is simply to have uh, just to get familiar with the variant itself so uh, some people concerned that the traditional Chinese characters are hardly are hardly recognizable but for me personally well, I, I personally play CNC with the, with the traditional characters I can't play with the westernized pieces even though I'm not a Chinese so it's really handy to just re just remember them once and forever and then uh, make use of it. So also you can always click on a piece to get an idea of how the piece moves. So it's also not, not a problem. And this sort of a move highlighted feature is very nice for variants itself because uh, with this, within this variance you, you can easily go for... Uh, uh, within this highlighting you, you can be quite clear of how to move the pieces and this this should be really helpful so uh, all the variants that I'm gonna be developing so at the moment I have the the base uh, variant for standard chess and this Chinese chess is a derivation uh, but it's not a single engine that plays two variants like Fairy Stockfish, not at all. It's a very miserable, uh, sorry, not very mis miserable, the miserable amount of code, I would say. Uh, a very minimalist uh, code, basically, that uh, is altered to play a different variant. So it's kind of like uh, the CNC is the derivation of the simplified chest. I will now walk through this uh, source code quick, quickly, so to give you an idea. But before that, uh, there are a few uh, kind of features that are similar for all the variants with this, with this, some minor modifications. So uh, we have the array-based board representation for all of them. Just for in National Western Chess, we have this hexadecimal 88 system, and for uh, CNC, we have 11 by 14 array-based. But this, this is just a matter of uh, distinguishing between the square that is on board and the off board squares. And then the next, uh, uh, the next few features are absolutely the same for all the variants. So we have three nested loops uh, based mode generation. So the idea is the, the wheel loop over the, uh, uh, over the board pieces first. Then we loop over the directions where the piece can go. And within every single direction, we loop, loop over the squares. And that's the way how we generate all the moves. Moreover, that 
uh, this sort of a mood generator is wrapped uh, into the so-called fail-solve Nigamax search with alphabet of prime framework. So fail-solve fra framework of the Nigamax search with an alphabet of prime. So uh, the move is generated within the search routine itself, and the evaluation function is also done there as well. So that's what I was talking about. Like the entire engine is the single function that takes word position as an input and outputs best move found within the fixed search, with, within the fixed depth search. So it's very minimalist. So the most of code actually goes for GUI to provide all this highlighting. Uh, by the way, I also have, uh, uh, I didn't probably uh, uh, bundle graphics. I probably didn't 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 specify this. So in this version, despite the fact that we have that we have uh, graphics, it's not a separate file. So everything is bundled into the single uh, HTML source file. So well, it's probably I just I just realized that I made a mistake. So it's not a a single JavaScript file, it's actually a single HTML file. Yeah, I, I wouldn't need to fix that, sorry guys. Uh, so the graphics is bundled using base64 encoding, so uh, it's it's available as the data structure is being stored uh, within the scrape tag of the HTML file. So uh, it's, it's like a single file, single HTML file container. So yeah, it's, it's not, JavaScript is, is, is actually, <laughs> what renders the board, what does, does all this stuff, but uh, the the file itself is actually the HTML file, not a JavaScript one. So just, just so, sorry for this, uh, a bit in, uh, this a bit of an inaccuracy. Uh, uh, I said, okay. So the move validation is done uh, quite pretty trickily. If you have a look at the source code, you will understand what I mean. Uh, pseudo legal move highlighting. So uh, because this uh, uh, engine, like the the prototype. Uh, from all the ver uh, which all the variants are derived from and all the future variants would be de derived from uh, is in essence a king capture engine which means that it doesn't have a square attack function so uh, we know that the move is illegal only if the king is getting captured the next move and in order to avoid doing that uh, actually on the board during the game we do a bit of cutoff uh, when the king capture occurs, and for CNC, we also do a bit of cut of when uh, uh, kings are facing each other because that's the legal position, and that's how uh, uh, this opposed general rules uh, is being implemented. And uh, that's the reason why the pseudo legal move highlighting only shows the pseudo legal, the pseudo, pseudo -legal moves, and it can really show uh, only legal moves. Let's say the king is under the check and you click on whatever piece and this move highlightings would be shown even though say your key is in the check but you can move here uh, but uh, it would not allow you to make a, an illegal move so that's a, a bit of a limitation but uh, bear in mind the miserable code size for the variant uh, for all the variants it's i think it's uh, a good trade-off actually okay guys so uh, without further ado uh, well uh, one more little thing to consider so every uh, every variant has so-called standalone version. So the idea is that this is just an iframe. So if you just uh, uh, inspect the element here, just to give you an idea, what is this? By the way, this is all the um, uh, this is all the embedded graphics. Yeah, I really need to mention that explicitly in the description. Just realize that. But here is the iframe, and it's pointing to a specific link. By the way, uh, yeah, I also need to. Add this as, as the feature so we can use string query parameters to specify the site to move and the search depth so that these are the two parameters that uh, every variant would be uh, that would be available to every variant so let's say if I just uh, say like play black uh, what it does you see like it just color black now okay so if I just make it play white now it's color white uh, the search depth is hard coded to three. However, it can be changed if you go for uh, a standalone version. So here, you can actually specify the uh, depth however you want, and it would be searching deeper. The reason why I set this to three because on my mobile device uh, it's a bit too slow and laggy because well, probably smartphone is just not that powerful as the laptop. So uh, just to make sure that it runs smoothly on all, on all of the devices, uh, I've used this three search depth. This engine doesn't have a quest and search, which uh, gives uh, a wide range of opportunities to bait it, basically. However, if you're not careful, you can get mated quite pretty quickly as well. Okay, so I think this is it regarding uh, 
the initial explanation of what is this and how it works and now let's go to uh, now, now let's go and have a look at oh, I'm sorry at the source code so uh, this is the HTML file uh, so for those of you who are not aware of uh, I've updated my Birmingham chess program which uh, gave a birth to this project actually to version 2.0 so here, here the entire HTML is. We just have a board. We have a style to for to uh, to uh, to load this highlighting and made is just makes a red square around the king to make to to give to give user an idea that your king has been checkmated or you have checkmated your opponent's king. And then the entire source uh, is a single script. So the license is bundled in. Uh, everything is there. Then we start from the piece encoding. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry for uh, piece color encoding, piece type encoding. Then how to how the piece uh, based on piece color and piece type uh, is built using this bitwise operations. Then we have a board. Uh, well, these pieces might be dropped because uh, if we don't want to bring the board to console, well, this is a bit of redund redundancy already. So yeah, I need to think about probably. Oh no no, sorry guys. Uh, in this version, this is essential because uh, for here we use the Unicode pieces, not the graphics. So yeah, and, uh, that's the reason why this array is absolutely essential because this is not graphics. This is the Unicode pieces. So yeah, we can drop it really. Then the piece weights to give an idea of how to trade the pieces. The move offsets is literally the rules of the game. So describing where exactly in what directions, uh, what kind of attack rates are available for every single piece. Uh, side to move is set to white by default. Uh, we can flip the board. Uh, so if uh, it's, it works the following way, so if we just uh, specify uh, in the string query parameter within the iframe, the color would be equal to black. It automatically renders the board from the opposite side to move. By the way, thanks to Harm Geert Miller for uh, uh, for inspiring, for getting the source of inspiration. How to implement this flip board stuff? It's very simple, but very strong and, and really cool to be honest. Uh, with, with my brain, I would never come with that simple solution, probably. And here is, uh, well, we have a few global variables we need uh, to share along, uh, to, to share between the engine and the GUI. So best source and best target score uh, storing, uh, I used to associate the best uh, score uh, returned from uh, the search routine. Uh, so we need to associate the best score with the best move and the move itself is the cooperation of the best source score and the best target score. So that's how we need, uh, th that's how we know. So within the search we do associate the score with this squares globally and this uh, and then the move itself that is made by the engine is taken from this best source score and best target score. The pseudo legal moves array is used in order to uh, store the moves for highlighting purposes. So let's say I just click on a piece. I have this Highlight this uh, highlighted square. So, in order to get the uh, square IDs for the squares to highlight, we do populate this uh, pseudo legal moves array. Click lock is used to provide this uh, click on square and then a click on square and then uh, click on the target square just to move the pieces. It's the most simplest way of doing this, probably. Uh, user source and user targets, uh, uh, these are the variables that are handling uh, where you click the mouse. Uh, to initialize the source square and when you click on the target square it also gets stored here. Search depth is self-explanatory I believe and the ply is used to uh, consider the closest distance uh, to the mate. So let's say we have mate in two, mate in, uh, mate in three, mate in four. Uh, without this ply it, it, it can go not for the closest uh, mating line but let's say considering mate in four instead of mate in two but with this ply it goes for uh, the closest mate, uh, the closest mating line that is available. Now the function itself. So uh, this is the standard uh, failsafe framework of the uh, Nigmax search with an alphabet of pruning. The validate uh, uh, is just uh, this is just a flag uh, that is used uh, when we uh, if we want to populate this pseudo legal move. So this is used when, when we call search not to actually search for the best move, but when we call it in order to get uh, uh, the list of pseudo legal moves. So that's the reason of this flag. And now site to move alpha bit and depth are essential here. So uh, that's, that's how it goes basically. So uh, if the depth is equal to zero, that's the 
uh, that's the condition to escape from this uh, recursive uh, uh, from from the recursive call so obviously this the function calls itself recursively this happens right over in here so when we exhaust the surge depth uh, then we are currently in the leaf node and we need to uh, assign a static evaluation to recur to, a to to the current given position we have encountered and in order to do this we just loop over all of the board squares initializing the piece and calculating material weights and positional scores so the idea behind the material weights is just to make sure that engine won't be trading quints for punts and calculating positional scores uh, makes it gives an engine an idea of where to develop its pieces so if you want to change the engine's plane style feel free to uh, uh, actually uh, change these values uh, it, it, it gives well generally so here is, is like it just gives an engine an idea that it needs to centralize its pieces and also it's important to keep uh, to keep the score symmetric because uh, uh, bear in mind that this is the bare minimum implementation it doesn't have a mirror array to mirror the score for uh, uh, relatively to the side to move so if you don't want to get bothered by that you need to make sure that the uh, p score table is absolutely symmetric otherwise it will be making kind of like developing pieces in uh, different ways for black and white but in case if you want this in balance stuff you can play around with that as well okay so let's move further on so here we just uh, initialize some sort of specific variables and the most interesting part starts here when the mode generation occurs so what we do in we do enter the search and the first thing to do we actually need to generate the moves to make on the board and to evaluate that's that that's very it so we look over all, all of the board squares first then we need to make sure that uh, uh the piece that we've picked up uh initializing in the piece make sure it's the piece is uh, belong to the side to move right then we initialize the directions so the attack race literally where the piece can go and when that is done then we do uh initialize the target square and we start to loop over the squares within the every single direction ray now you might wonder how to deal with the leaper pieces like kings and knights so let's say white knight is not going to be jumping like this all of the time so in order to do this in, in, in order to avoid that we do what is known as the faking capture so let me just quickly find uh, uh where it's yeah so here it is so if the piece type is less than five which means so all the pieces with the type less than five are leapers and uh, all the greater than five in standard, in standard chess they are sliders so the idea is to uh disable is to mimic the capture for this uh, for leaper pieces and that's the uh, and that's the condition to break out of the loop that loops over the uh, squares within the uh, attack ray and for all the other pieces literally for the slider pieces like bishops rooks and queens this is not applied obviously and they do uh, go uh, within the squares until either hit the board edge or own piece in that case just drop uh, just break out of the loop or if it captures opponent's piece so all these conditions are listed here so we need to make sure that we're not going off board we need to make sure that we don't capture our own piece uh, we need to capture only diagonally with the pawns. Uh, we want uh, uh, to disallow the move. So literally, this is the, the place for a beta cutoff. In case uh, if we get our king captured, so that's the way how to actually validate the moves without a square attack function. So it's quite pretty interesting implementation. Again, like thanks to Hermgert Miller for uh, kind of like inventing this in his Micromax chess engine, which is absolutely amazing source of inspiration for me. It was for me for, for years, basically. So here we do populate the move list in case if the validate flag is available and then we just move a piece on the board uh if this is a promotion we do uh alter we do convert this uh to to the queen and then increment ply before recursive call decrement ply after recursive call and this allows us to uh uh, keep track of the first uh, of the made in two made in three etc so the, the ply is uh, how many plies we need to consider uh, we need to take in order to get to the mate and with this with this sort of a similar simple formula we get the closest uh, mating distance so that's that's how it works okay so we do our recursive call uh, let's say white moves then we want uh, 
to search for black's response and evaluate that is if this is depth two if this is depth three we do white moves black moves white moves and then the list of the moves and so on and so on and after that uh the stack gets reversed obviously and we also need to take uh, take the move back to restore the initial board position uh we do keep track of the best source and best target in case if this if no pv move is found so we need to make sure that we store these guys as well now the alpha beta stuff itself so this is what is known as the fail soft framework the difference between the fail soft and the fail hard that in the fail hard uh the best score can exceed the alpha beta bounce while uh in fail soft framework it actually can so um, it's arguable which one to use but originally micromax used fail soft framework so i decided to keep that that good tradition however in my uh full-blown engines i use the fail hard framework because i think that's a little bit easier and uh, easier to understand and to debug and it's a bit more fits my style but anyway uh so we do update the uh the score it's uh we do update the alpha value here okay uh the uh, beta cutoff cutoff occurs in case if we do exceed the beta uh so this this is kind of like for killer moves basically uh faking captures that have been mentioned already and unfaking the capture for uh to, to make sure to to load the double palm push so this is a little a little bit of a hack uh again like inspired by harm Gert miller uh to actually allow double palm moves in case if the pawns is on the second rank for white and on the seventh rank for black and finally we do uh, uh the association of the best uh, source square and best target score which is visible globally with those temporary uh, uh updated uh during the search itself okay and after we do return the alpha by the way here if, if we get if we ever get here this means that the uh, uh, node fails low which means that we didn't actually find a better move it's a bit of a theory of the alphabet search itself but anyway uh the value that we get from uh the search routine so it, it returns like an integer as the score but we also have a um, move that is associated with that sort of a score and in order to get the move we just store the best source square and best target square we use them to uh to actually store the source and target squares that has been involved in that and this is the entire engine guys by the way this is the entire engine and for cnc it's it's very very similar basically uh, the only difference is just a different board size slightly different rules uh, a bit of a hex for uh, how the cannon moves right so that's kind of it and uh the rest of things is actually the gui so I think the GUI code actually takes more space compared to the engine code itself uh, because, well, uh, it's not really that many functions, but uh, it's quite a, plenty of man, quite a plenty amount of work to do here. So uh, I'm not going to be diving uh, in details because it's really quite pretty self-explanatory and the code is available uh, in public. So what we can say, so we so this is the function to handle the user input. So uh, occurs every time we click on a piece to move it on a chessboard, and eventually this calls, it checks for legality, yeah, and it takes the move back if the move is illegal, uh, and generally, uh, and generally, uh, by, uh, at the very end, it actually invokes uh, invokes an engine to start searching for a given search depth and output the best move uh and yeah this is a bit of a refactoring so the take move back function is done uh, every time when the when the illegal move is is uh, when the illegal move occurs but uh yeah so then the uh, then the make engine move is what was so here we actually do start uh a real search we detect if the black is checkmated or if white is checkmated here and here. It's not really optimized, but uh, I think like for, for GUI, it's better to be explicitly clear how the things work. So we need to adjust the board position in case of the promotions. In CNC, this code is dropped because there, there is no promotions in CNC. And eventually, so we either, if we have a checkmate, then the game is over. We do highlight the keen uh, with a red square around it to, to give user an idea that the game is over otherwise we just update the board and 
highlighting the last move that is made by the engine so this is what it happens so the last move made by the engine gets highlighted okay and function drawboard is self-explanatory literally what it is so this is the little uh, this is the little code to load to just flip the files and ranks to print the board to draw the board from either from white side to move or from black side to move uh, we use the Unicode pieces from the array above that I've, uh, from the array above that I've been mentioning in the beginning of this video. So, all the pieces are literally it's like a text. But uh, using some CSS stylings, it's not getting selected like it was in the previous versions. So it's really nice. It, it feels like a, like a real image. However, this is text. But in CNC, I have the embedded use, uh, base sixty four uh, encoded graphics, as I've been mentioning before already. And this is literally it, yeah. So very, very simple. And just to give you an idea that this is the exact template uh, that is used for, that would be used for all the variants I'm gonna be implementing. So for, so for CNC, this is absolutely the same. Just, just to give you a very brief idea uh, of how the code looks uh, for CNC uh, is the following. So uh, all the source code, uh, apart from the standard international western chess is not available in public uh, i mean uh, the commanded version is not available in public so if you just uh, say go to cnc and try this standalone version and try to have a look at the page source you will see the obfuscated version and that's done intentionally well it's so big code because uh, this all is literally like image data here so we just quite pretty big images so it's all, all, all of the code is literally just encoded images the engine itself it starts down here down below starts from here the reason why this is obfuscated is because uh, in my dreams I want to monetize this code uh, I mean uh, I want to monetize the commanded code so I do provide the international western chess code for free and the source code is available like this right and for uh and for cnc uh for cnc if you just try to go to cnc and click on a source code uh you have the obfuscated version here right so it's not available for free right so the idea is if you really want to have a look at the code you should contact me directly and we'll talk about the price and i'll send you a copy of the commanded code but just to give you an idea how the commanded code uh would look like so i, I just really want to say this once and forever not getting back to this really uh also i feel a little bit confused because i've never been uh closing the the source of the product that i'm doing basically so my code was op was always open source but anyway this code is still free so no violence for free software so it's really free you can do whatever you want uh basing on uh wtf pl public license so do what you, well, actually what do you want to public public li license okay but yeah just just to give a bit of a benefit from this uh i do uh, close the code for variants so for standard chess you can have it for variants you need to pay but just to give you an idea what what you would be paying for, I want to show you. Uh, so this is my private re repo. If you <laughs> if you pause the video and type the code from screen, probably you would be able to come up with a working solution. I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, I don't think that's an that's an option, but who knows? Uh, I'm one of the guys who would probably go at least to try that, especially having the initial variant. So. Uh, here I have the private repo so you won't see this on my github because it's private and also you can't even if you see the the link to it you you won't be able to git clone it because uh, you'll need a password that you don't have well you can hack into my account yeah and still everything <laughs> in that case you obviously can't do it but I don't really think it's worth it so just to give you an idea how the uh, source for CNC worry uh, looks like so it's quite pretty same structure uh yeah i also need to change the header a little bit but you see like this this header is, is, is really a copy paste yeah also the variant description i didn't yet change that but 
the actual code has changed. So first of all, all the graphics is embedded here. It's very long line, so I'm going to be showing you this. Just not no line wrapping, hopefully here, uh, fortunately here. So we have the piece images and the board image here as well. Then uh, the piece encoded is slightly bit different because we have the advisor and the Canon piece here. Also now white by black. The color encoding is a little bit different because well, it's just since it goes, it all goes a little bit different. We have a custom piece weights and the piece square tables is not bundled in, into the board in this case. Here is just a single array. The move of sets literally describing the uh, rules of how the Chinese uh, chess pieces move is available here in the move of sets. Also in CNC we have the river, which means that let's say bishops can't actually cross the river, right? And also here we have the palace zone. So here is the palace for red and here is the palace for black and kings and advisors can can actually escape the, the palace. So that's another then this is the board array, 11 by 14 mailbox that I've been mentioning. So the global variables are all the same and well the search and the code is, is really shares the similar structure. Just We just do loop over 154 squares, a slightly bit different condition for keeping track of the onboard versus offboard squares and some uh, uh, some extra uh, code to uh, to reveal the blocked bishops or blocked knights, so so, so you now can see and see knight can jump over the piece, uh, it would get blocked, and here is the code to actually keep track of that. We have some specific rules for cannons, uh, allowing to jump over the pieces and capture only in that case. So some specific some rules specific to to CNC, and also if they post kings, we also do return uh, uh, kind of like a maiden made and stuff here just like just like we do if the king is uh, if the king gets captured so that's a, a little bit of a hack how this is done and the rest of the code is quite pretty the same the, the GUI is also very very similar it's literally yes yeah, a little all the same I just remove the promotion code from there what else yeah everything else is literally the same so yeah uh, slightly bit different uh, board uh, board rendering because we have different number of rows and columns but it's very very similar so I just wanted to give you an idea guys that the source code for CNC is very very similar to the source code of international western chess just with regard ju just with some minor modifications to actually make this engine play CNC and to prettify the graphics to give an idea uh, to, to give user an option of actually having this uh, Mm, this beautiful kind of like image of a board so if I just make this full screen it fits the screen so this is kind of it and it's quite pretty playable it beats me uh, I, I even didn't, didn't, yet, didn't yet manage to beat this at once at least like just just straight ahead if I think a little bit more probably I would have been able to do this but that's that's how it works basically so uh this is actually it guys, thanks for watching, uh, just a few words as the outro here, so uh, I will probably provide uh, timestamps in the commentaries, in the pink commentary to, give to so you could have actually watched only those parts that you're interested in, and probably this would be the new trailer for Chess Programming Channel I believe, yeah that might be, that might be the good case basically for promotion. So. I'm going, I'm not sure how well that goes, but I'm going to add many variants here. Uh, I'm not sure which one in particular. Uh, anyway, first, uh, I, have, I, ha I have some ideas in mind. Uh, so first, I would be adding those variants I'm interested in. And when I will implement all the variants I, I, I was interested in, then probably, I don't promise that, but probably I would be okay if you suggest some variants you're interested in, so I could implement those as well. So again, like don't expect this engine to be extremely strong or something. So it's not designed for uh, strength and speed. It's designed for simplicity, clarity, and with the didactic purposes in mind, which is the core gist of the idea behind actually starting this project ever. Now this is really it from my side guys, thanks for watching, play chess and have a good time. Until the next time and take care.